prepare for death it's a journey we'll all take learn how to make it a path to heaven's gate learn how to make it a path to heaven's gate Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya habiballah Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya nabiyallah Wa'ala alika wa ashabika ya nur Allah Sayyiduna Ali al-Murtada karam Allah ta'ala wajhahu al-kareem said Supplication of every person is veiled until he recites salat upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and his blessed progeny Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم الحمد لله عز وجل مديفيوز in this silsila of the discussion of death الحمد لله عز وجل in the last episode I discussed about the signs of a good death and inshallah عز وجل in this episode I shall discuss about the issues relating to the deathbed let's take some knowledge and wisdom from the ahadith and mubarakah Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Death becomes easy upon the person at whose head side Surah Yaseen is recited. Hazrat Jabir bin Zayd radiallahu ta'ala an reported, It is desirable to recite Surah Ra'd near a person who is on his deathbed, as it brings ease upon the deceased and in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, when anyone was on his deathbed, this would be recited. O oh Allah, forgive certain person, the son of certain person, hear the person's actual name appears, and cool his grave, expand his grave, and after death, grant him relief and grant him the closeness of your Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and keep him as your beloved. Allow his soul to reach the level of the pious and allow him to join in such an abode where he will remain well and so that his fatigue may vanish. After this, we will recite the rood upon Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and this dua would be read repeatedly until the person had passed away. Hazrat Sha'bi radiallahu ta'ala an reported, The Ansar would recite Surah Baqarah near the deceased. In other words, a person on his deathbed. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Remind your deceased about La ilaha illallah. In this discussion, deceased here refers to those who are on their deathbed at the onset of death. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an reported, when a deceased starts to experience the intensity of death, do not force him to read the kalima, but give him talqeen. In other words, read it and let him hear you and this will remind him of it because no munafiq has died on this kalima abdullah ibn abi awfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported a person presented himself in the holy court of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and said there is a young man here whose time of death is near but he is unable to recite the kalima so he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Did he not used to recite this kalima in his lifetime? He said he used to recite it in his lifetime. Then Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam went to him with everyone. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said to him, Say la ilaha illallah. He said, I do not have the power. In other words, I am unable to recite it. 
Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, why? He said, I used to disobey my mother. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam asked, is she alive? He said, yes. The woman was brought before Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam asked, is this your son? She said, yes. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, if you build a huge fire and tell you that either we will throw him into the fire, will you forgive him? She said, yes, I will forgive him. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, so make me an Allah witness and say, I am now pleased with him. She said, I am now pleased with him. Then he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said to the young man, Now recite the kalima. Hence he began to recite it. Huzur sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Alhamdulillah alladhi anqadahu bi minan nah. Praise be to Allah who granted him salvation through me, my sadaqah. Abdul Rahman Maharibi reported, There was a person whose time of death was upon him and he was being instructed to recite the kalima. He said, I have no power to recite it. In other words, I do not have the ability because I used to keep the company of such people who encouraged me to speak ill about Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Undoubtedly, there is adab for the enemies of the Sahaba. Actually, anyone who has enmity and animosity in regards to any beloved of Allah is already in intense punishment. Even a person with the least intellectual capacity, in other words understanding, knows that one who disrespects his parents is deserving of intense adab. Therefore, what can be said about those who disrespect the awliya, upon whom hundreds and thousands of parents can be sacrificed, and the sahaba ikiram, and the leader of all, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, undoubtedly, they deserve punishment, the intensity of which they cannot even comprehend. This is reported from Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, that Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Malakul Mawt alayhi salam came to a person who was dying. So he opened out his limbs and saw no good deeds. Then he opened his heart and found no good deeds. Then he opened out his jaws and found the tip of his tongue stuck to his palate. As he was saying, La ilaha illallah, so due to this kalima, he was forgiven. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala an reported that Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, should I tell you what Ismi Azam is? The Ismi Azam is the dua of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam. Part 17, Surah Al Anbiya, verse 87. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu mina dhalimeen. Translation from Kanzul Iman. There is none worthy of worship except you. Glory be to you. Undoubtedly, I have been of the wrongdoers. If one recites this dua 40 times in his illness and then he finally passes away due to this same illness, then he shall receive the thawab of a shaheed. If he regains his health, then he shall be cleansed from his sins. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and reported that he heard Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam saying, one who said these words at the time of his death, Allah will enter him into paradise. La ilaha illallah al-halimul kareem. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. He is the most forbearing, the compassionate, thrice. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. All praise is due to Allah, creator of the world, thrice. Tabarak alladhi biyadihi al-mulku yuhyi wa yumit wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Glorified is he in whose divine power is the kingdom. He gives life and causes death, and he has power over all things. Thrice. 
Hazrat Abu Hurairah radhiyallahu ta'ala reported that Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Allah Almighty says to me, a believer is the epitome of goodness because I remove his soul and yet he still praises me. Hazrat Mujahid says that Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and said, Remember, never sleep without wudu because the soul is kept in a condition in which it is removed. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, The one whose soul was removed by malakul maut in the state of wudu shall receive the status of a shaheed on the day of qiyamat. Hazrat Bakr bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala and reports, When you close the eyes of the deceased, then say, Bismillahi wa ala millati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I pray to Allah azawajal that he gives the ability to prepare for our death the way the Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam to us. Ameen mijahil nabil ameen sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Prepare for death, it's a journey we'll all take. Learn how to make it a path to heaven's gate. Learn how to make it a path to heaven's gate.